Let's add some state management to our responsive UI architecture. Hey guys, this is Dane from Fullstacks and welcome to part 3 of the responsive UI architecture series. Today we'll focus on adding a state management solution on top of the responsive UI system that we've built in part 1 and 2. There are two different things that we'd like to achieve with our state management solution. The first thing is to keep the responsive friendly UI that we built within part 1 and 2, but we'd like to avoid code duplication when passing data or view models down to all the layouts that one specific widget might have. And the second part is to keep the ease of my traditional architecture for the provider setup in terms of the on model ready callback and the responsiveness for when a view model state has changed. We'll start off by covering the traditional base widget setup and then move on to the new state management setup for passing all this data down to the responsive widgets. So as always, before we start, you can head over to foldstacks.com. I have a complete written tutorial with a link to download the starting code for this project. So if you open up this project in Visual Studio Code, you can see that we have the end result of part two of the responsive UI architecture functionality. We have the orientation layout, responsive builder, the screen type layout, and our sizing information. We'll start off by adding the provider package to our code, and then we'll implement a familiar class called base widget under the widgets folder, then import the material package, and then create a new stateful widget called base widget. We'll give it a generic type that has to extend from change notifier. And then we'll pass that type to the base widget state. And for the base widget state class, we'll also provide it with a generic type that extends change notifier. Then we can also add the type to the base widget type in the state extension. And that's it for the generic setup of our base class. Then we can go ahead and define the properties for this base widget. The first one is a function that returns a widget and takes in our build context. Then we can add another final function that takes in type T called on model ready. And finally, we can add the last property called view model of type T and we'll pass this in all through the constructor. Then in the base widget state, we'll keep a private variable model of type T. We'll override the init state function. The first thing we'll do is set the model equal to the model passed in from the widget. Next up, we want to check if we have passed in the on model ready callback. So I made a mistake and I checked if the view model is not null. You should be checking if the on model ready callback is not null. If it's not null, we will then execute the on model ready callback and pass in the model. Then for the build function, we'll return a change notifier provider. For the builder property, we will return the model that we keep a local copy of. And for the child of this change notifier provider, we'll execute the builder pass into the widget and pass in the context from this change notifier. That's it for the base widget. The only difference is that we're not using the consumer directly as the child of the change notifier. Next up, you can create a new file under widgets called base model widget. Then you can go ahead and create an abstract class called base model widget. It will take in a type T and extend the widget class. Then we can import the material package. Then we'll start off by creating a protected function that will return a widget called build. This function will take in a parameter of type build context and a model of type T. Then to return our own custom element, we will override the create element function and we'll return a type called data provider element that takes in type T. We'll override the create element function and we will return an instance of the data provider element of type T. We'll pass in the current widget 
into its constructor. Then underneath the base model widget, we'll create a new class called data provider element of type T. It will extend a component element. For the constructor of this data provider element, we will define an input parameter of type base model widget, which we'll pass to the super constructor as well. Then we'll override the base model widget property to return a base model widget type. And what we'll do is return the widget that's passed into the super constructor. Then in the simple function where all the magic will happen, we'll override the build function and we'll execute our widgets build method. We'll pass in the current component element as the context. And for the model of type T, we will call provider of and we'll pass the type and we'll also supply this component as the context. What this allows us to do is when we are using this widget as the base class to extend from, we'll get our model information directly in the build function. Let's go ahead and see how we can use that. We'll start off by going to the drawer option file. And as you can see, we are passing in a title and icon data and then duplicating that code to pass it into every other layout that we want to use that information in. The first goal of this architecture was to remove all of that code duplication and provide an easy way to access the data passed in to all the layouts from a single place. Let's start off by creating a data models folder and under that folder create a new file called drawer item data. This will be the model that represents our drawer items. We'll create a class called drawer item data and we'll add a final string value called title and then a final property called icon data that is of type icon data. We will pass that in through the constructor as optional parameters. Then you can head back to the drawer option file and remove all the duplication where we are passing the same data to the same properties for all of the layouts. Then we can go ahead and wrap our screen type layout in a new widget and for that we'll use provider.value. And for the value that we are passing down, we will construct a new drawer item data and pass in the icon data as well as the title. One thing that was causing problems was the orientation layout. Whenever we changed orientation, sometimes I'd get an exception because of the state of the widget. So instead, we'll use builder functions. Change the landscape to a function that returns a widget that takes in the build context and the same for the portrait. Then in the build function, we can go ahead and return a layout builder as the root of our build function. This takes in a context and provides us with box constraints in the builder function. Then you can copy all the previous code and paste it inside the builder function of the layout builder. For the landscape conditional, we'll check inside if the landscape function is not equal to null. And if it's not, we will execute the landscape function, passing it the context. For portrait, we will just execute the function, passing it the context. Back in the drawer option where the orientation layout is being used, all we want to do now is declare a shorthand function that takes in the context and returns our widgets. Now to show off the actual state management solution and how we'll be passing our data down, you can go ahead and remove all the properties from the constructor as well as the constructor itself. And then we'll extend from the base model widget and we'll pass the type drawer item data. And as you can see here, it returns the model that uses the provider of call to fetch that model for us. So for the build function itself, you can now add a new property next to context called drawer item data, and we'll name it data, which now gives us access to that model that we passed down through the provider dot value constructor. Now this is a small class, the base model widget itself, but I think this is a very valuable pattern to use, not only for this, but I might integrate it into my actual architecture as well. We'll just go ahead and change the extended type to base model widget for all of our drawer option mobile UIs. We'll go do the same for the drawer option tablet portrait. We can remove all of the duplicated um, data passing code for the constructor and instead just use the base model widget and use our data directly within the build function. 
then we have to go ahead and update all the places where the orientation layout is being used to pass in builder functions instead and that should be easy with a shorthand function definition once that's done we can then launch the application to check if everything is still working and if you pull up the emulator now which i'm using a pixel c tablet you can see that all the draw items are still there and as we change our orientations nothing is new it's all still there there's this one exception that i don't actually know how to solve i don't even know why it's causing it there's no stack trace it usually happens after you open the drawer and then rotate again that gives you a different exception as you can see with the debug lifecycle. If anyone has any inputs on this or how I can avoid this, please let me know. It happens only once and then after this, it doesn't happen again. So if I keep rotating, there's no exceptions that show up. So I don't know how to fix this. I don't even know what it is, but let's get back to the functionality of this tutorial. So now that we know how to pass data down to responsive layouts and have it easily integrated with all the layouts without too much code duplication, let's move on to how we will attach our view model to our views and make it maintain state and react to the same stuff in all the responsive layouts. We'll start off by creating a view models folder and inside we'll create a new file called home view model. Then we can create a new class called home view model that extends the change notifier. For this tutorial to keep it on track just to display the fact that the state remains the same throughout all the responsive UI layouts, I'm going to create a very simple counter application. If you want more in-depth tutorial of building a production level application using this architecture, you can watch the video that I'm linking in the description as well as showing at the top right of this video right now. We'll add a title property to the home view model with a value of default. Then we'll add an initialize function, which will change the title value to initialize. And we'll also call notify listeners to make sure that the UI is updated. Then we'll add another property called counter, which is an integer and has a value zero. And finally, we'll add a function called update title which will simply increment the counter. Then we'll set the title value to the text updated and display the counter. And finally, we'll call notify listeners. Now you can head back to the home view. We'll surround our screen type layout with a new widget and we'll use the base widget. We'll give it a type of home view model. And for the builder function, we'll return a function that returns the screen type layout widget. Then we'll pass in a view model. We will construct a new instance of the home view model. And for the on model ready callback, we'll pass in a function that receives the model and then we'll call model.initialize on that model. Then we will head over to the home mobile portrait. We'll remove the constructor and instead of extending from a stateless widget, we'll extend from the base model widget and give it a type of home view model. Now, as we did earlier with the data, we will now receive the home view model in the build function. We'll call that model. And now to display the state of the model, we will center our text in an expanded widget and we'll pass the title as the text value. We will also add a floating action button. We'll create a new floating action button. And for the unpressed function, we will call the update title function on the model. If we run the code now, I mean the UI is not important, but I don't want that menu icon to be in the middle. So I'm quickly just gonna set the cross axis alignment to start. And if you run the code now, you'll see that when you click the floating action button, it updates the state and updates the UI as well. And to display the fact that the state of that view model carries over to the other responsive UI widgets, we'll go to the home mobile landscape widget and extend it from the base model widget. We'll give it the same type home view model. And in the build function, we'll now get back the home view model. Within the row of the scaffolds body, we'll also add an expanded child that will center the text and the text will be the value from model Type. And if you run the code now and you tap the button a few times, 
when you rotate your device you'll see that it carries over the state from the other responsive widget meaning that the view model is shared between all of your responsive widgets for any of your devices and any of your orientations and that's basically how i'll be handling my state management thank you for watching this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and learned something please leave a comment on what you'd like to see next and i'll see you guys next week